I want to give people in this dark, broken world hope. You can actually fly above the pains of your past and use it for good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Carganella Online Variety Entertainment Podcast. Here's your host, Paul Carganella. Hello and welcome to Cove. This is the online variety show in which we aim to both entertain and inspire our podcast listeners and YouTube viewers through a variety of art forms, including music, poetry, storytelling, special guest interviews, travel blogs, books, and so much more. I'm excited to meet, get to know, and introduce everyone here in the Cove community to an inspirational author today. But first, of course, we pull the cart back behind the horse and we say hello to our producer behind the scenes, producer Craig. Craig Jackman. Hello, producer Craig. Welcome. Hello, Paul. Hello, everybody. Oh, this is going to be a good podcast. I like what I read about our our guest today, and especially since it is involving um, kind of inspirational things. Oh, yeah, for sure. And we are promoting her book today, Above the Turbulence, Your Ticket Out of Pain, to purpose which you can get on amazon i suggest everybody pick it up no matter how much pain or purpose you have or need in your life i'm actually before i read her bio i'm going to read the first paragraph of her introduction just to get people on board with what we're doing today and who we're Mm. talking to she writes and every word in this first sentence are capitalized our choices change everything life is just fine one day then out of nowhere we're caught completely off guard a windy road with its blind corners and potholes appears taking us off course difficulties and trials are our unwanted travel mates some we never invited and certainly never saw coming while others if we are honest we brought along ourselves through poor choices how we respond defines us and ultimately brings us to our destiny so that is the first paragraph of the introduction wow, to her book. oh that's a lot right there just to take in and the author of above the turbulence your ticket out of pain to purpose is carolyn deck who was born and raised in new zealand she used the secret splinters hidden in the dark crevices of her life to give her the courage to conquer and overcome past childhood pain using her trials as fuel to transform and rise above the turbulence of past brokenness she learned the power of choice The way she responded was key to unlocking the life she experiences today with great love, joy, peace, hope, and certainty. In her teens, she traveled as an international student and spent a year in Kansas. Upon her return, she embarked on a career in the travel industry, becoming an area manager in her mid-20s. Having spent over 25 years away from her homeland, Carolyn is obviously no stranger to change. She's lived in Australia and America with her best friend and husband for over 32 years while jointly raising their five children. Carolyn has traveled to 20 countries and counting, experiencing many adventures and trials along the way. Her passion is to empower others with the tools and knowledge she has gained through her experience so they may live a life never thought possible. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Carganilla Online Variety Entertainment Podcast our guest today, author Carolyn Deck. Hello, Paul. Hello. This is awesome. It's it's uh, been quite a journey just connecting, hasn't it? But thank you very much for having me. Yes, we. Uh, it was an adventure for sure, getting this scheduled and, and connected as both of our lives are crazy. But that's. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be worth the journey and worth the wait. We're so excited to speak with you today. Thank you. And I warned you ahead of time, I warn all of our guests about our icebreaker introduction challenge, where we we challenge our guests to tell us everything that wasn't in their bio, all the non-worky stuff that we could possibly learn about you in 60 seconds or less. Are you up for the challenge? Certainly. Yes. (laughs) All right. Okay. Let's try it. (laughs) And one, two, three, go. Uh, Let's go. Okay. Well... I love animals. I um, had my first cat, Ginger, that I 
um, adored. Um, I never had a dog, but um, I'd go to my grandparents' farm as a little girl in Canterbury. And in the morning, they couldn't find me. Like, where on earth is she gone? And there I am with the sheepdogs in the kennel, just about strangling them because I love them so much. <laughs> and so uh, fast forward, I've had two dogs, two Australian shepherds, and now I have my big burner, um, Freddie, who is just adorable. He's the goofy big furball of my life and he's adorable and actually when you change dog backwards it says dog a uh, god so yeah he's my um ever loving <laughs> unconditional awesome furball <laughs> that's me is he he's the ruler of the house huh uh not quite <laughs> <laughs> all that's right me. good Good that he still knows who's boss, but coming right at 50 seconds, that was great. Um, so you grew, so did you grow up in like a farm atmosphere? No, I didn't. Um, I was a city girl. Um, I would have loved to have, um, but no, um, we, we were city dwellers, um, my sister and I, and um, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was fun. Um, we were all things sport. We, my dad loved sport. Actually, mum did too, um, but especially my dad. And I have to do a little shout out right now for those of you um, who aren't aware, the Rugby World Cup is playing this weekend. Ooh. And it's a true World Cup where I think something like 25 nations are playing. And um, it has come down to the wire. New Zealand versus South Africa. And I am so super excited um, and that was why I cancelled actually one of our <laughs> our um, our last appointment. I did get a ticket to France and we watched the quarterfinals, which were amazing. So um, that's a little bit off track, but yeah, we love our rugby and it's this weekend, so I'm super excited for that. And my dad, that was my my dad. He planted that seed in my heart. For all things rugby, he longed for a boy. He would drag me along to Athletic Park, which was our stadium back in the day. It's no longer anymore. Uh, they had to build a bigger one. But, um, yes, so we're, we're super excited. <laughs> Very cool. Um, well, speaking of electricity and big moments, I just want to talk about your journey a little bit. What is, I know, according to your bio, you were born and raised in New Zealand, but what brought you to the States originally? Uh, well, originally, originally, I was an exchange student mm. back in, this will date me, but in 80, 81, I came to live in Kansas um, and I graduated in, in 1981. Um, and that was, that was quite an exceptional journey for me at the time. Um, yes, I allude to the fact that my, my family life growing up was difficult um, and it was as a child witnessing my parents fight and, you know, um, all that that involved. It, it was scary, frightening, having police visits, et cetera, um, and the pain of that. Um, I then ended up living with my sister for a year and her husband. At that time, I applied for a scholarship to come to America and somehow I landed it. <laughs> um, it wasn't because I was clever, I can assure you. I think I just talked my way through the interview. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I had a year in America. So that was very cool. Um, and then lo and behold, I don't know how many years later, um, yeah, here I am back again with my husband, three kids, adult children. Uh, we've left two in other parts of the world, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, life's a journey. And what have I ever believed? I'd be back here eight years in this beautiful city of Chicago. It, it's such a journey. And this is part of the theme of my book, right? That life is constantly changing and how we frame our choices and our mindset and how we respond to these choices really do impact us. It is so important because, you know, I run into a lot of people who kind of have that mental roadblock, like that f change is scary and oh. um, it can be traumatic really for a lot of people. And so it's definitely a valuable skill to be able to roll with change and be adaptable. 
uh, a lot a big part of my theatrical training came from improv or was you know focused on improvisation and that is exactly what it's saying yes and okay this just changed okay and we're going to do something new with it and i kind of view life that way uh, you kind of just have to take take what you're given and either you know you know it sounds like so much i'm sorry i haven't dug into your book yet but so much of what it's about is your choice is your next choice um, just like it, at, in an improv improvised scene that's kind of like just like a microcosm of life whereas you're presented with something and it's your choice on what to how to respond to it and add to it to to grow to make the scene advance and develop and thus is life and sounds like you've been doing that since the very beginning well i'm not sure that i have but it's evolved right um and how I start is for, for people, and this is something I would suggest you do, you know, we, let's face it, we've all been through trial and tribulation, right? And, and I think the first thing we have to do is actually stop this rat race, this wheel just turning and, and just responding, you know, like, or reacting rather, sorry, we just react to this and that. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know? And so I sort of talk through the process of how I've been able to um, cope with change and to stop and pause um, to to actually walk back through the past is very helpful um, and not to relive it but just to to evaluate some of the things you've believed right believed about yourself believed about the situation um, I've, I've found it interesting that when you spell the word believe b-e-l-i-e b-e -L -I -E, B -E, there could be a hidden lie in what you've actually grown up thinking, who you think you you are yourself, wow. who you have believed people have told things about you. And so you've lived into that. And I've seen that with numerous people, even within my family. And so I was drawn into the process of, of stopping, going back, reevaluating these things and truly learning who I was and dismissing some of these lies and um yeah I talk about that in my book and, and two situations that Black Lives Matter a young girl talked about it um this subject and then it happened that I was in France and um I went to Da Vinci's um museum and he had that on his wall it was a quote of his and I I used that to go back into the crevices of our life where it's painful and it's dark and it's scary but just maybe if you illuminate what's in there that could be the beginning actually of the turning point and you can use that as your fuel to actually change your life around it's incredible the power of that was amazing for me it's ironic as we're recording this we're um running uh to it where October, the month of October is winding down here as we're recording the episode. And October is actually Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And so in my job at work, a lot of uh, uh, my responsibility is putting the messaging out and, you know, shining a light on that it, <laughs> that it's happening and that there is support and help out there for anyone who's dealing with domestic violence. And it sounds like from our conversation so far, that's that was a big part of your childhood was um, witnessing that. Yes. Um sort of from the age it wasn't always like that it I, I likened it to this that you know really we live in a broken world and we don't have all the answers and just because you get married with love doesn't mean you have the answers and essentially we, we still are broken people you know let's face it we don't know everything we bring along our own um, issues of life and we still working ourselves out really let's face it um and because life is such a journey and so what happened to my parents that was that, that they came together um in love and but slowly but surely through bad choices actually and their headspace and and um their focus and some of the lies that they heard themselves 
it all started to unravel. And so my recollection of that was from probably about seven years old through to the age of maybe 14, which is when my sister came and um, offered to to um, look after me because it was basically said, well, what are we going to do with her? Mm. Um, and so that that's the beginning of my book, but um, I write it as a travel agent. So it's kind of a, a fun, a fun book. It's, um, it, it's fun, but serious because I want people to be aware that we have choices, even even when people have made choices for us, which is what happened in my childhood, that years later we can unpackage that baggage because we carry that, we tend to carry that with us and we can unpackage that and we can actually address it and use it for our good when we understand that it wasn't about us back then. And actually Rick Warren has a book called The um, Purpose-Filled Life and his first sentence is, it's not about you, hmm. which is fascinating in a world of hashtag me. You know, it's all about me, right? right? And so when we reframe some of our thinking and have this understanding of who we are, and that really led into my faith and questioning who God was, because my dad was training as a minister at the time. Um, yes, interestingly. Yeah. Yes. So it, it um, alluded me to the fact that, yes, question. God's a big God. He wants us to question and he has answers. And and I found the answers. You know, I use in my book, G-O-D, get out of the disaster. Give me order in the decision. Um, and when I reframed the fact that my understanding of who I was and who I wasn't, that I don't know, and I don't know the depths of other people's heart and their heartache. So when you have this sort of um, humility of posture and you realize, hang on, I need help. I need perhaps a higher perspective, hence the title of my book, Above the Turbulence. You need to fly above that turbulence and have a different perspective. Well, I found a heavenly perspective as to who I was and that started to change everything. And, and that's where I get my hope from. And yes, my hoodie, uh, it was a gift to me, actually. But I realized, you know, this is, this is the theme of my book. I want to give people in this dark, broken world hope. And that comes about by choice. We have choices. And I just want to direct them into the understanding of where you can actually fly above the pains of your past and use it for good. Amazing. And I think so much of it is about, you know, circles around responsibility, the responsibility that you take in your life and the responsibility that you feel for things that have happened to you. Um, growing up, you mentioned half of your childhood life, you were, you were around this environment of, um, you know, turbulent uh, domestic times did you feel responsible for it back then? I didn't feel responsible as in being the cause, mm -hmm. but I do write um, quite vulnerably about the times where I would help my drunken mother who'd been so heartbroken and her, her choice was substance abuse. And she tried to get relief from that and also playing the piano. And I vividly remember as a little girl in the middle of the night when I should be asleep, you know, peacefully, I would get out of bed and I would say, come on, mum, let's go to bed. So I kind of felt responsible for caring for her, even though I was only a child. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And did you, was writing something you always did or felt passion <laughs> for? Is that something that came, came uh, later in life? Sorry, I laugh. Um, I, I wasn't a good student. I was out and about in life when I was young in places I shouldn't have been. Um, and so um, the answer to that is no. <laughs> it, and it wasn't my idea. Um, I, you know, since coming to America, we, we became um, 
involved in our church. And that's even a crazy story how I found this church. But anyway, another time. But anyways, we were in this transform series, which is interesting because the whole book is about this transformation of mindset. Well, this particular series was the transformation of your heart. And we just built, uh, bought a property and it was about being generous and the mindset of where does all this come from, actually? Where do your blessings come from? Where does your money come from? Where does your skills set come from? And it was about being generous to actually fund this new building for the next generation, for kids to come safely and, and families to come. So anyways, I got woken in the night and literally this is what happened. God wrote me and said, write a, write a book. And I'm like, ha, huh? wrong sister. You should be talking about sister. She's, she's the educated one. She's a teacher. She's smart. You know, she's all things scholastic and, and writing. And he goes, no, I choose you. And I'm like, oh, really? And then he goes, I said to him, well, dumb idea. I mean, who? I mean, seriously. Anyway, dumb idea. No one wants to read my story. And again, history. How do you spell history? His story. Wow. My, 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 my belief is he is the God of the universe. He is the creator and it is his story. And he said, look, you have a message through the brokenness of your life and what you have found, which is really my story. And I want you to write the story and I will enable you. That's why I chose you because you have no idea what you're doing. Therefore you'll trust me. And he has seriously done that. He's enabled me with people, with schools, with teachers, with people of encouragement. Would I have ever believed at 61, I'd publish a book? Heck no. Like, that was not on my radar. <laughs> so this is interesting because I've, we've spoken to another author and he mentioned the same kind of a thing. He, he actually heard a voice telling him to write his book. Um, for you, was it like an audible when he speaks to you? Is it like, do you, is it just something you feel in your heart or is it like an actual conversation that you're hearing and having with him? I, I can't hear a voice like I'd be talking to you, but it was a definite voice in my head that woke me in the night and I had this conversation. So, um, yes, I would say yes. And, you know, I've studied, I've done a BSF Bible study fellowship for probably 20 odd years now. And he's called the good shepherd. And, and in the Bible, it says that my sheep hear my voice and, and they follow me. Well, I, I do hear this, this subconscious nudging and I get it from reading the Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. I recommend you do that. <laughs> um, you know, when you buy a car, you've got the instruction manual there, right? When you, even a vacuum cleaner, anything today has an instruction manual. Well, that is mine for living. And that is where I take my authority and let me tell you, it hasn't let me down yet. And it is, it's is—it's life-changing. So that was my choice. I i have my rhythm. My Every day I listen to that first. I listen to the voice of, of, of the Lord speaking to me each day first. I don't want to listen to the news. Like That's just discouraging. Sure. And I talk about that in my book, actually. What do you listen to? How do you, how do you stop that mono monologue going on in your head and I have very specific tools that you can use that will will stop that and and then what do you do if you empty that well you've got to fill it right because now you've got this void so then what do you do so it, it's really crucial because then what you hear and you believe you act on and that gives you your outcome so if you don't like your outcomes you need to go back to the beginning I love that. And your, your book is full of keys. You say, uh, understanding the power of our response is key. And you, it sounds like, you know, you, you've 
you were inspired to and you wrote the book to give people tools to help change their lives for the better. But I'm interested and curious to know if the experience of writing the book and following his his uh, encouragement to you, how that has changed your journey. It's changed my journey in that it's given me greater purpose, like much greater purpose. The people that I've been meeting and, and discussing with, like a, um, a gentleman last week, he was a drug dealer, a gang member. Um, he'd been in jail for, for years. And we had this conversation with the same thread being that we can use the pains of our past for good. And that's what God says in Romans 8, 28 that he will do that and he can and I just think in in the world today people are so needing hope that's you know he Jesus said he's the light of the world well how better to shine than in a dark place and I, I just feel like the time is right now and God has just brought me through this journey and helped me through making better choices like you know hey I'm only human I I still I'm not perfect I'll never be perfect until you know the time is over where we don't need to make any choice we're just in heaven enjoying love and life and perfect living so yeah it's just given me even greater purpose actually that's great and we're talking about your book it's on Amazon above the turbulence your ticket out of pain to purpose and we're, we love to hear authors read from their books on this show, if you'd be willing to do a little bit of that for us. Yeah, sure. Um, like I said, I, it's a bit of a travel journey. So I, I, as a travel agent of many years, I, I tell you what to pack and what to leave behind. I talk about the perils of travel. Um, and then I talk about destinations and then modes of travel. And this is my favorite chapter, chapter 21. And I jump from bits, you know, jump all over the place. So um, here goes. Bethlehem star, clip, clop. There he stood, captivated. I couldn't take my eyes off him. His finely chiseled face was strong. Alert, his questioning eyes held mine, reading me and giving me 100% of his attention. Locked in, I moved closer. His legs, long and muscular, held him standing well above me. His nostrils flared as he continued to assess me. I reached my hand out, slowly as not to alarm, toward his gleaming, sculptured body, gently arching, arching his neck down, he greeted me. As soon as we were back on dry land, my group leader led us down the quiet, sleepy streets to the stables. There stood Nez. Nez is Hebrew for sign, miracle. It was not his muscular, tall frame that caught my eye or his stellar head. He had a low hung neck, floppy ears and sad looking eyes. No, he was short. He hadn't even come up to my chest. It was his star across his wither that jumped out at me. I thought he was no ordinary donkey, and he wasn't. He'd been well trained to take tourists up steep ascents along narrow, rocky, ridged trails and back down. We had taken the adventurous option, no air-conditioned coach packed with the masses. Sitting out in plenty of time, we achieved our goal. We were the first to arrive at these ancient tombs. Sure, it wasn't the longer, sure, sorry, it was the longer, less comfortable ride, but what an experience. I felt connected somehow, seeing up close the homes of the local people who lived in the small villages we passed en route. From my saddle, I watched smoke wafting out of their chimneys and smelt the burning logs of their stoves as their morning kakadi, Egyptian tea, was being brewed made of hibiscus flour, petals, and sweet local honey. Dusty and dirty and tired, 
I viewed a welcome sight as we came through the village, the stables where we had started our five hour adventure. My bum was sore, not to mention my legs from straddling Ness's back all day. I was keen to dismount. No doubt he was equally ready to get me off. Finding fresh water in a bucket and a pile of straw, I thanked him for an unforgettable day. After a rub between his ears and a pat on his Bethlehem star wither, I bid farewell. Weary from the sun's heat that evening, I collapsed onto my little single bed and thin mattress in my hotel room, my thoughts drifting back. I reflected on the humble dwellings of the locals versus the elaborate tombs of the rich and famous pharaoh's wives, their ultimate resting place. My humble donkey compared to the majestic Arab stallion I'd ridden the day prior. My thoughts then traveled to Israel and Jesus, a true king, riding his best Bethlehem donkey for the last time into Jerusalem, Palm Sunday. How humble, reliable, and steadfast he is. Nez had been to me as Jesus is to me. Jesus is the actual miracle in my life and promises me an everlasting kingdom with no focus on luxurious tombs filled with treasures of gold and jewelry and other items believed to be needed for the journey into the afterlife. Jesus is my treasure, and because of him, all I need awaits me in heaven. Grateful for Jesus' constant care of me, I reflected on how he had carried me over the rough terrain of life, up mountainous moments where I endured pain and heartache, then down treacherous ravines of trial and tribulation. While I, while I don't always understand or appreciate his timing, I know he faithfully works all things for good in my life, finishing with eternal kingdom of endless peace, joy, and love. What a reminder. What a miracle. What carries or who carries you through your trials? Are they dependable, trustworthy, and there for you always and forever? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Carolyn Deck reading chapter from chapter 21 of her book above the turbulence your ticket out of pain to purpose i love that message uh, we can't do everything on our own like you're saying it's kind of the world has turned into me 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 selfie this selfie that but you need help you need a support system around you, you need you need a steady rock to stand on a foundation and that's what nez was for you that day uh what a fun journey and way to look at it and i love that you're able to make those connections and have that perspective from above the turbulence, just like your title is and, and uh, have a greater view. And, and like you, you mentioned perspective of life. We're not, we're not um, physical beings here having a spiritual experience in life. We're spiritual beings having a physical experience. And it sounds like you bring a lot of that to your book. Yes, I do. And I just want to give a little shout out, you know, we don't know. And, we, and I just love how God uses everything for good, right? And so when I was a little girl, I had, um, we didn't have much, but we got money for our birthdays and I would buy um, books on Africa. I don't know. It was just this love I had, the seed planted in my heart. And I would sketch lion head and elephant and giraffe. And I just love, love, love that. Years later, I'm in Africa myself. I'm pinching myself. There's a chapter on that. And I'm going, oh, my goodness, like, how on earth did I even get here? And we're collecting sticks at the end of each day. And out of nowhere came these little faces. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, yes, I'm in your home. I'm in the Serengeti, but oh my gosh, these little faces with such joy would greet me and we couldn't speak English and to each other. So, and then fast forward, I had a daughter who wanted to do um, a, a, a broad um, ministry. And so I said, well, you work it out. She ended up, ended up, sorry, in Malawi and um, in an orphanage, helping build homes for these kids, right? she came home with these photos and I'm like, oh, there are those little faces again. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in love all over again. This is wild. So here I am, fast forward 
another decade in Austin, Texas, writing a book because I have no idea what I'm doing. So now I'm at a, um, a writer's conference and I meet this guy, Eric. He tells me his story and look what he showed me. The faces. You see that. Faces with names. And I'm like, what is that about, Eric? Tell me. He has started a foundation called Faces with Names, Orphan Kids in Uganda. Today, I want to tell you that all proceeds of my book are going to those little faces. Mm. They are going to help these kids in Uganda. And when I did my first book launch, God's timing is amazing. We had the pastor that looks after these kids. He happened to be in America. He came with me on, on a couple of my book launches. He was able to speak into the hope given to these kids, right, through generosity. And that was the whole purpose of my book, the transformation of let's be generous. Let's, let's realize that the blessings we are we receive are from above and God wants them to use to heal me, which he did in my book, but then to bless others. And so I really hope people understand this message. It's not just about us and we lean into that. It's such a powerful, amazing, joyful, peaceful experience knowing that we're here to help others. And I'm just so excited to be part of this journey with these kids. And I'm hoping that I'll be there in March to actually see them and do whatever I can when I get there and give them some books, help them read, whatever that looks like. So that's amazing. And thank you so much for doing that and all of your work. And um, producer Craig just put in the YouTube live stream chat the link to Faces with Names International. We'll put the sh the, uh, the links to that in all the show notes as well. And Carolyn, before we wrap up here, if there's, I mean, we've made you've made so many profound positive points and with this show I'm uh, one of my very foundational goals is to help inspire people and raise vibrations in the world and, and positive positivity in the listeners lives uh, what is one one last if you have one message that you would uh, that you'd want our listeners to hear yes I'll go back to the beginning <laughs> Our choices matter. They are powerful. You do have a choice, actually, and how we respond is key. And above all of that, I just want to point people to the love of God, that Jesus loves them so much. He came with skin on. There's no religion that does this. God actually came out of his place of heaven to be with us because he loves us that much. He wants relationship with us. So when you choose to walk a life with him, it will be exceedingly abundantly beyond your wildest dream. And he will take you on a journey that you would never have imagined or thought possible. So I encourage my listener, your listeners, whoever's out there, be encouraged. There is hope. and you're greatly loved. There is hope that you can rejoice in. Rejoice in that hope. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for author Carolyn Deck. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Paul. This has been such a pleasure. I, yeah, wonderful. And you know what? The conversation doesn't have to stop here, just by the way. People want to reach out to me. Um, my details are in the back of my book, or you can email me, find me on Facebook, Instagram. Just put in Carolyn Deck. Yes, that is the great thing about this internet. There are so many good things and bad things about this internet social age, but one great thing, and I've talked about it several times here on the podcast, is accessibility, being able to reach out to people and connect to people. Uh, we encourage that uh, on this podcast, and Carolyn's encouraging that you do that and keep connected with her as well on the socials. So please do that and keep the conversation going. And that is a perfect segue because we're going to keep the conversation going. We normally 
normally we'll awkwardly say goodbye to our guests and uh, I'll say now we'd like you to log off because producer Craig and I were going to have a quick chat about the conversation that we just had and hear some poetry but I'd like to invite Carolyn to stay on for a minute as we bring producer Craig back in hey buddy hey wow <laughs> Carolyn thank you so much that is I mean that is inspiration mm -hmm. it really it really is um, and I love what was, uh, what you share also on, on, I think I, I read this on Amazon because it actually applies in a, in a sense to the poem that I would like to share with everybody today. Uh, knowing we have choices changes everything. You and Paul have both said the same thing here. Understanding the power of our response is key. Getting above the turbulence, putting ourselves, yes, we are so focused in on everything, but stepping back a moment, taking an actual survey of what is happening is so, so important. And you know what? It does direct our path. It shapes who we are and it leads us to our destiny. I mean, it's just so impactful. Um, and the poem I found is one that is just, I thought, so perfect for this. Um, Ruth Zambo who claims Ooh. she's a poetess, a writer, and a student. She's a young woman. But boy, does she make you think about how unpredictable life is and how we need to take that step back because we don't know what the choices are that are out there. So her poem Ooh. is actually titled Life is Unpredictable. And so if you... I would like to share that with everybody here. And we'd love to hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Craig Jackman interpreting Ruth Zambo's poem, Life is Unpredictable. You never know where life will take you. You may have numerous plans about your life, but they might not work. You might think you have it all. In actual fact, you have nothing. One moment you have friends around you, the next moment you are alone. You may have a lot of money today. You may be broke tomorrow. You may be young today. You might be old tomorrow. You may be healthy today. You might be unhealthy tomorrow. You may be alive today. You might be dead tomorrow. You may be living in a mansion today. You might end up sleeping in the streets tomorrow. You may have parents today. You might end up being an orphan tomorrow. You may be happy today. You might be sad tomorrow. Life is so unpredictable. Let's cherish every moment we have. You never know when things will alter. Appreciate all the good moments in life. Tomorrow is never promised. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Craig Jackman reading Ruth Zambo's "Life Is Unpredictable." I mean, can can you can you just sum it up any better than that? <laughs> Fantastic. And you job, experience Craig. that, Carolyn, with all of your life journey, and to put it in your perspective into a book, to step back above the turbulence. And just to keep the focus that, you know what, we just got to appreciate all those good moments in life. Perspective and choices and uh, having having faith. I mean, that's it, right? Enjoying each moment and making the most of every day. Sharing the love, spreading the positivity, raising the vibes around you. And that's what we, we aim to do here on the show. And thank you for being here on another episode of Cove. What's really, 
really special about this is we get to hear the inspirational stories behind our entertainers and explore their journeys. If you are enjoying this show and you know anybody else who might enjoy it as well, please, I ask you to make a recommendation. Tell somebody, tell a friend about this show or leave a review, leave a comment on the YouTube video. Every little recommendation helps and we appreciate it. It helps shows, little shows like this grow and keep going. I uh, appreciate you so much for being here. Join us again next week for something completely different.